Hey guys, I'm Comedy Turtle, and you are watching a furry film review. I review movies that feature an animal or an animal-like character in the main cast. At the end of it, I'll tell you if I think the movie is brilliant or deserves to get slapped in the face by a fish, like this. Thank you. Now then, today's movie I have not watched before this review, so it's either going to be a howling good time or it's going to be bad. It is. 2017's Sheep and Wolf by WizArts Animation, suggested by Sharpno Flark. Are you ready? Let's go! You got it. What? Where'd you come from? Now then, we open with a gorgeous forest scene and a sheep taking pictures of some bugs to protect the village from any harmful bugs. When he runs into the main character, Gray, the wolf. He runs away and goes back to his flock, which has a whole little village. Gray, finding out the sheep village, goes back to tell his pack. But the elder of the pack and the leader informs them that they will not be actively hunting the sheep. While doing so, he announces that he has plans to retire and asks for volunteers to fight to be the leader of the pack. Here we are introduced to Gregor, the big bad wolf and the villain of the movie. He volunteers to lead and Grey counter challenges him, proceeding to goof off. Megar, the elder, sees that these are the only two stepping forward, announces that they will fight on a set date. But for now, everyone's to get used to living in their new home. Gray meets up with his longtime girlfriend, Bianca, and informs her that he has a plan for tonight, and it's going to be a big surprise. She thinks he's planning to propose to her, but turns out that he's just intending to make fun of the Big Bad. The Big Bad, not liking how the whole we only hunt for our survival and not to prove our dominance, goes out to hunt some sheep, and Gray puts a stop to it, letting go the only victim they catch, a young lamb named Shia. Later that night at the party, Gray humiliates his big bad, and Bianca gets fed up with Gray's antics, breaking up with him, causing Gray to go wander off and try to think of how he can change. In the quickest way possible to get back to Bianca. He meets a uh, Romani hare named Mommy, who gives him a potion of transmutation, but it doesn't transform him as intended. He wants an internal transformation, it's a physical transformation into a sheep. The local sheep find him and take him in. Here we are introduced to Lyra, the little land brother and another sheep named Moz, who is a non-stop chatterbox. Gray eventually starts spawning with the sheep and goes out to see a tournament alongside Shia and Moz. But Lyra finds out and scolds Shiloh for going to the tournament. On the way back, she encounters two of Gray's old pack mates. As Wolf threatens to eat the sheep, Gray sees the wolf and goes to talk to them, but ends up scaring them away, causing a whole misunderstanding between him, the wolf, and the sheepherd. The sheep, impressed by Gray's supposed courage at confronting the wolf, welcome him into their flock, fully and unconditionally. And while at the party to welcome him officially to the flock, he tells Shiloh and a couple of other young lambs the super move that can defeat anything. Shiloh goes out to try it out on the wolves, only to see that the big bat ends up killing off the elder of the pack and captures Shiloh. Gray and the flock hears how Shiloh has been captured and decides to mount a rescue attempt between Gray and Moth. They rescue Shiloh and sets up Moth to be the hero 
so we can get together with Lyra. Great feeling down about how he's missing Bianca and goes to try to talk to her. Finds out that Megra is dead and Gragar has become the leader. Kind of like the Lion King with Gar and all that. Huh. Perils. Am I right? After a talk with Bianca, he returns to the flock. Only to be get accused by the sheep seen in the beginning of the movie of being a spy. And so he leaves the flock. As he's wandering around after his big departure, he runs into Mommy again, who informs him that she has found a cure to turn back into a wolf. But if he doesn't take this cure by that time tomorrow, he will be forever around. But she also lets slip how Gregor is planning an attack on the village. Greg goes to rescue the village. Big confrontation happens, and he ends up defeating the big bad. Get married to Bianca. Happy ending all around. Okay, now for the review bit you actually want. This will be told on three different aspects. Story, character, and art. Visuals, if you will. Each one will be determined if it's brilliant or deserves to get slapped in the face by a fish. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Let's start with story. Story-wise, this movie feels like a growth story. Personal growth, that is, because Grey does its grow internally. From being the class clown to being someone who generally cares for those around him and becoming a better leader. As he's forced to take a look at different aspects that he would not have looked at before. So, story-wise, I would have to say this is a brilliant movie. Characters. If we were to look to at the characters as individually, they're okay. Nothing really stands out except for Moth. But then again, he's a love-struck fool of a Jabba. Quite honestly, how many guys get like that, really? Boys are weird. Thank you, Lyra. Understatement of century, but thank you. However, if we were to compare them to similar roles from other movies like the Pixar's Cars, then they didn't really stand out that much. Lightning McQueen and Major versus Grey and Maws, there's a fair bit of parallel between those four characters. Maud and Mater both are chair boxes that talk non-stop. Only thing different from Mater is Maud has a love interest. While Mater's just a good guy all around. Lightning McQueen versus Grey. They start off as relatively shallow, but do grow to love their community. So Grey may have something going for him before the movie, as he wasn't intentionally shallow. At least as shallow as compared to Mike McQueen. But overall, I would have to say characters get a slap in the face by a fish. Art. The detailing on this movie is amazing. From the fur and wool of individual characters, to the blades of individual grass, and even the background design. Each one looks believable. I would have to say it is brilliant. Overall, if I had to give a choice between giving this movie a slap in the face by a fish or calling it brilliant, I would have to call this movie brilliant. If you agree or disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. I want to give a big shout out to Sharp No Vlog who suggested this movie to me. And to all the artists who let me use their works in this review. Links to each of their Profiles are in the description below. Be sure to check it out and give them some love later. But that being said, if you liked what you saw and want more, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notification of my next video airs. Leave a like or maybe a comment. Share it with friends, family, other furry friendos you might know. And I hope to see you all next time. Jane. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Click the video on screen right now to check out another one of my videos. Until next time, Johnny.